I don't think I'm breaking new ground here by saying that Kurt Cobain has one of the saddest stories in music history. Forming the band Nirvana in 1987 with bassist Chris Novoselic, he quickly earned national acclaim. By the end of 1991, with the release of their second studio album Nevermind, the group were set to conquer the music world. But as Kurt's star grew, his mental health deteriorated. He didn't want to be in the national spotlight, and this, mixed with an undiagnosed chronic stomach illness along with multiple substance dependencies, put him in a difficult spot at the dawn of 1994 where our story is set. You see, my tone here at the beginning of the video may have been misleading. The story I'm telling isn't about Kurt Cobain. It's about another young artist, whose ambition to secure an interview with Cobain led him on a wild journey. This video is about Nardwar. Nardwar. If you don't know who Nardwar is, you've either been living under a rock or you're my mom. He may very well be the most iconic music interviewer ever, likely because I can't name another iconic music interviewer. Victory by default, mostly, but Nardwar is still superior to any contemporary. What sets him apart, you ask? Well, appearances aside, Nardwar is massively talented at researching and ambushing. He'll track down an artist, catch them by surprise, bring them gifts they didn't know they wanted, ask them questions no one's ever asked them, and wrap up every interview with the iconic Keep on rocking in the free world, and do 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 <laughs> But before any of that, he was just John Ruskin, born in Vancouver, Canada on July 5th, 1968. Although being a massive music fan from a young age, conducting his first interview with punk band Poisoned at just 17, John's family still disapproved of his ambitions. Well, my parents have an idea. My dad would like me to be an engineer. And what do you think about that? I'm gonna try to be an engineer, but I don't think I'll be an engineer. But by this point, there was no stopping the locomotive that was the human serviette. In 1986, he began attending the University of British Columbia and officially adopted the name Nardwar because it sounded funny. In 1987, he started volunteering at the campus radio station, CITR, running a variety show. Some people have called a stupid variety show. Through that show, he began interviewing anyone he could, not just musicians. Bob Denver, Sonic Youth, the cast of Degrassi Junior High, Mikhail Gorbachev, Tommy Chong, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Skid Row, Alice Cooper, Dan Quayle, John Cretien, and many more. However, Nardwar would later share that early in his career, there were three people he wanted to interview most. Bill Clinton, Neil Young, and Kurt Cobain. And in 1991, he made his first step towards the latter. On March 8th, Nirvana came to Vancouver for the third time ever, and Nardwar scored an interview with Chris Novoselic. Chris called into CITR and had a remarkable 10-minute interview with Nardwar. Is there a word that Nirvana likes to hear when they're playing? Yeah, fuck you. By securing an interview with Nirvana's co-founder, Nardwar had just made his first step on the long walk to Kurt, and that walk was about to get much longer. Remember, this interview was in March of 1991. By then, Nirvana was a fairly popular alt-rock band, hanging out with the likes of Sonic Youth and Tad, but they were nowhere near the dominating force I described earlier in this video. That level of success would come with the release of their second album, Nevermind, in September of 1991, and its lead single, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Mind you, this is a sixth month discrepancy. Nardwar got very lucky, but luck wasn't gonna cut it from this point on. The more famous Nirvana grew, the harder it was to reach Cobain, but Nardwar had an ace up his sleeve. Just three months later, in July of 1991, he scored an interview with Courtney Love. Alright, let's get this out of the way. I understand Courtney is a bit of a sore spot for many Nirvana fans, and for good reason. She's had her share of controversies. But for the sake of this video, Courtney was a positive force. If you don't know, Courtney Love would go on to marry Kurt Cobain in February of 1992, but in July of 1991, Kurt and Courtney weren't even dating yet. According to one source, they had only met two months prior, and they weren't going to start dating until the latter months of 1991. Nardwar just interviewed Courtney and her band Hole out of the blue, and it went terribly. Nardwar would later say in an interview with NME, First time I interviewed Courtney Love in 1991, she hated my guts. I thought I would have nothing to do with her. But then, something crazy happened. The night of that interview, Nardwar got a call from someone who worked with Courtney, and they said that she was refusing to perform in Vancouver if Nardwar wasn't in the crowd. You see, the thing about Courtney Love is, she's very difficult to read. By the time Nardwar interviewed her again in 1993, Courtney basically treated him like she'd known him her whole life. And this admiration is ultimately how Nardwar got his interview with Kurt. On January 3rd of 1994, Nirvana was back in Vancouver, this time performing at the PNE Forum, and Nardwar knew this was the time to strike. His plan 
was insane. Nardwar and his cameraman Hugh Baker showed up at the p and &E forum at 2pm and snuck into the dressing room before Nirvana had even arrived. As insurance, Nardwar left a cassette tape of his interview with Courtney Love along with a note that read, Hey Kurt, would you like to do an interview with me? Nardwar. But that was the backup plan. The real reason why Nardwar put in the effort to sneak in so early was to camp out in the dressing room bathroom and ambush the band. They showed up at 2 p.m. The show wasn't until 8 p.m. We were prepared to stay there for six hours. They stood on top of toilet seats and stayed there in silence for hours. No entertainment, no food, no drinks, just waiting. Finally, something made the two giggle and they were caught by security. Nardwar, however, thinking quickly, blurted out that he was the president of Sub Pop, a music label that Nirvana was previously attached to. Somehow, this didn't work and they were kicked out. Bummer. Thankfully, the tape remained. Nardwar left dejected, but hopeful that Kurt would give him a call. He sat by the phone for hours, and out of the blue, it rang. But it wasn't Kurt. It was a friend of his from CBC letting Nardwar know that Nirvana's opener, the Butthole Surfers, were free for an interview. Again, Nardwar was tantalizingly close to his interview with Kurt. He returned to the same dressing room he had just snuck into hours prior and conducted the interview, and sure enough, there was Kurt Cobain. Nardwar approached. Hey, it's Nardwar. I left you a little note, and I don't know if you saw it. Here's a cassette of my interview with Courtney. Would you like to do an interview with me? Only for Kurt to respond, uh, maybe one day, but not now. And again, Nardwar came so close, only to be turned away at the precipice of his goal. He again left the dressing room dejected, but proud that he gave it another shot. The next day was January 4th, Nirvana's last day in Vancouver. In the morning, Nardwar's cameraman that I mentioned for a femtosecond, second, Hugh, called and asked him if he was going to interview Nirvana. No way, I'm not going to interview Nirvana today. That's it. I had it. It's not going to happen. But Hugh insisted. So what are you going to do today? Nardwar responded, nothing. And Hugh exclaimed, exactly. So they ran down to the Four Seasons where Nardwar had heard they were staying, and right as they arrived, who's getting into the elevator? None other than the band's drummer, Dave Grohl. He runs up. Hey Dave, it's only for Grohl to interrupt. I know you, you're from the band The Goblins. Nardwar was shocked to be recognized by the drummer of the biggest band in the world, especially considering that he wears a sheet over his head when he performs with The Goblins. How would he remember you from The Goblins when you guys play with sheets over your head? He's that, he's that down. But Nardwar pushed past the flattery. Thanks, Dave. I really appreciate that. I'm also with CITR Radio, and I was wondering if I could interview you in Nirvana tonight at the PNE Forum. Dave accepted and promised to put him on the guest list. However, when Nardwar made his third appearance at PNE, he was stopped by security. You're Nardwar. We kicked you out last night from the backstage. You ain't on the guest list. Nardwar quickly tried to explain that Dave Grohl himself added him to the guest list, and if they just looked, they'd see, but they weren't having any of it. No, you've been in this town long enough to know you'll never, ever get on the guest list. Again, Nardwar had come within inches of his interview with Kurt, only for him to be turned away at the door. But before he had a chance to wallow, who else walks in but Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain. Nardwar shouted, Hey Kurt and Courtney, it's me! And Courtney responded, Hey Nardwar, I listened to that cassette you gave Kurt, you gotta learn to edit me. Nardwar replied exasperated, Okay, thanks, I appreciate that, but can I come backstage with you? She agreed, only for the same security to interrupt. You can't bring Nardwar. Only for Courtney to turn back and say, That's my cousin Nardwar, I can take him wherever I want. And just like that, Nardwar was backstage with Courtney Love, Chris Novoselic, Dave Grohl, and Kurt Cobain. With no more barriers in the way and the support of literally everyone attached to the band, Nardwar got his interview. I heard a rumor, I think I might have read it in Interview Magazine, that Kurt and Courtney first met at a deal. <coughs> <at> a... <coughs> that's tough, that's tough. Did you first meet at a DOA gig in Portland, Oregon? Mm hmm. <laughs> I'd love to say that they all lived happily ever after, and after establishing this first interview with Kurt, Nardwar would go on to interview him once every few years, asking bold new questions as Kurt's career evolved. But we all know that didn't happen. Just two months after this interview, Kurt Cobain took his own life at his Seattle home on March 5th, 1994. He was 27 years old. Kurt's death is often held to be one of the greatest losses in music history, but his life is something worth celebrating. He had a loving family, an army of adoring fans, and an incredible career. And he tail ended it all by making the dream of a young interviewer come true. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you liked me, subscribe. I've been Mark But Evil, and I still don't know how to end the Kurt! Doot 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 doot. Doot 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 doot.